All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so here are the directions that we need that you need to run. It's the same kind of setup. Uh, I've been told by a couple of students that the student machines are running pretty slow. So if it starts running slower for you, uh, don't panic. I'm still posting the videos and you have the opportunity to review the problems as always. Uh, so those of you who are in uh, Steppen Center, you will see that the pup Fesser is in the house. Uh, you're welcome to take her new dragon toy and fling it and let her and pet her and uh, do all that stuff. So that's uh, here to help with the, some, uh, just a little mental health pick me up this in this challenging semester. Um, all right, can you guys hear me in the back? All right, so I just, I just hear a lot, of, lot more uh, chatting than normal. So I just wanna make sure that everybody can hear me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish up our discussion of AVL trees, and then we're going to begin our discussion of how we address some of the challenges with AVL balancing. And the, what we're gonna study for the rest of the lecture is what's known as a B tree. For those of you who might take uh, databases or advanced databases with uh, Professor Bulal and a Professor Weninger, B trees is a good foundation of how elements are stored in databases. So you're gonna be learning a lot about that today. And the B trees were the foundation or the inspiration for the invention of a data structure we're gonna spend all next week studying called a red black tree. A red black tree is the foundation of pretty much every tree that you will see that's in a standard template library in standard set that it's used. And then standard map is a combination of a red black tree that's sorted by keys, but also has a value. So that way it's kind of like a hash table, but with a reduced amount of memory, uh, what we call standard unordered map, the pure linear probe hash table. All right, uh, just some quick notes on some upcoming due dates. Uh, the final draft and email of the proposal to your mentors is due tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, almost everybody has gone through. Um, I'm starting to get, I got several last night and this morning, the email is already being sent out. Uh, the proposals are looking outstanding and uh, the mentors are already letting me know like how impressed they are with the work that you've done. So make sure you get that done. Uh, if I've coordinated with your team about something else uh, regarding the dates, uh, you, you know about that. Um, so. Every week, your team will perform a code review with your project manager, and you need to complete those by the coming Friday. So a week from tomorrow will be your first code review. So you're going to be going over what it is that you worked on the previous week and the, the objectives, and they'll walk you through it. And I already have the uh, script and rubric for the code reviews. The general idea is that you'll go through and say, well, this is our objective. and if you did do it, you'll show exactly what you accomplished and how it is that you can demonstrate that you've accomplished your task for that week. If you ran into some troubles, that's the opportunity for, as a group, as well as with your project manager to discuss ways you can get around it. Are there other alternatives? Are there risks that we hadn't considered? What do we need to do in order to ensure that the progress of the project continues to go? So that's a general idea with the code reviews. And then the first memorandum will be due a week from this coming Monday. So that's where you'll just in the memorandum to say, oh, here's what we generally did. This is what we discussed in the code review. And here's what we're going to uh, adapt our plan for the coming up week. So you can document your progress as you've gone along. And you'll see that I have in there that memorandums are very common in industry. They're very good, especially if you're working on things that preserve intellectual property. So if you are going to put in a patent or a claim that this is something that you developed independently, having that weekly update indicating what you did and when will make it significantly easier to file for a patent or a license. Also, uh, so next week on Wednesday, there's the university mini break. The way I'm accommodating that, there will be no lab next week. So no lab on Monday or Tuesday. We're still gonna have the Tuesday and Thursday lecture, but no labs on Monday or Tuesday. Does anybody have any questions about the upcoming due dates or anything like that before we begin lecture? Okay, so let's get started. So what I wanna do is we talked about AVL balancing with insertion. And what I'd like to do is go over briefly how I've implemented this in code. So we have a public virtual method. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the AVL 
tree.h. And so this is the final code. And the first thing is I have a private and public method. So the public method is used to just take in the value. And this is all we need if we're talking, if you're dealing with the user. All they need is to say, all right, I want to insert this value into the AVL tree and everything else, I don't want to deal with it. That's abstraction. So what you're going to do is you will pass the initial root of the tree as well as that value to the private method. And so up here, we have our insert, which we are calling the node pointer by reference. So initially this is root and we're passing that value const call by reference. And so what we're doing is we are going to insert just like we did before with the binary search tree. So this is until the very last line of code is gonna be the exact same thing that we wrote up last week together. So initially we say that, well, if it's null, we just create the pointer and insert it there. And then we did the, if it's less than go left, if it's greater than go right. And if it's else, we found a duplicate like so. And then at this very last line, I'm gonna go in a lot more detail about what this method does. We're gonna call a method balance that's gonna to work to balance the tree on the way up. So, so far it's just building off of everything that we've done together so far. So we're gonna have four different methods. We're gonna have rotate with a left child, rotate with the right child, and then double left, and then double right. And then based on this, you can put in different numbers to test and practice. And this will produce the same results as the, what you'll be expected to produce on an exam. So here's the way that rotate with left child works. There we go, all right. So the way that rotate with left child works is that, let me zoom out just a little so it's clearer. We create a new pointer and we point at the left. So if I have a node, I point at the current pointer's left child. And then I do that small rotation. So if I have a pointer here, new root is pointing here, no matter what it is. It could be null, it could be a, a node. And so cur pointer left is now gonna point to new roots right. So I have this new root right pointer and then new roots right is gonna to point to cur pointer. So what we've done here is we've actually performed this rotation. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the height values of those two nodes. Cur pointer's height is now gonna be the maximum of the left and right of cur pointer. And I'm gonna add one because I'm adding in the new node. So whatever the height was before of those two subtrees, I'm now gonna use that. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with new root based on that particular node. And then I'm gonna update that so the cur pointer is now pointing to the new root. So now that new root that I've brought up is gonna be the value. So I went into a lot of animation last week, but this is now just being, is how we're implementing it. Rotate with right child is gonna do the exact same thing except in the opposite direction. Does that make sense to everybody so far? So now I'm gonna call double with left. Double with left is when we had that double rotation. And then I'm gonna say, well, first I'm gonna rotate with left right child with the left subchild, and then I'm gonna rotate left with the current pointer. So I can perform that right rotation and that left rotation, that'll get me that zigzag that we demonstrated last time. And now I'm gonna do the opposite on double with right child. I'm gonna to rotate to the left with the right because the way it works is I'll have, right, I wanna account for this zigzag in both of these scenarios. So first I wanna make sure I rotate, in this case, it's gonna be curve pointer right, and that'll bring this one up here. So now what will be, if I had A, B, and C, it's now gonna rotate such that C comes up and eventually what I'm gonna want is I'm gonna want C, A, and B. 
So that's what's going on here in this specific code. That allows me to perform those single rotations and move it up rapidly and then update the height. So that way I have it and I can make rapid, I can improve the runtime of the increases later. All right, so um, what I'm gonna now show you is the balance method. And the balance method is what takes advantage of all of these. Um, here we go. Find previous. There we go, found it. So one other method that balance uses is a method called height. So if the curve pointer is zero, we're gonna return zero. Otherwise, I'm gonna return the private member of that particular node, which is the height node, which is the node. So for balance, I wanna walk through this step by step. And if there's something you don't understand, I want everybody to pester me with questions because I wanna make sure that you understand the design process on this particular uh, data structure. So what's going on here is I first say, well, if the node I'm passing to it is null, just return. The same principle that we do in every other tree. First thing we'll do is provide some security. We wanna make sure that we don't inadvertently try to perform non-null operations when we don't have that memory. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the heights to the left and the right. So Kerr pointer is pointing to two nodes. And if, when we use height, if it's a null pointer, it's zero. So if I have one node to the left and nothing to the right, I can get that one minus zero or zero minus one. The next thing is when I say left height minus right height is greater than allowed in balance. So when I created the AVL node last lecture, I said that we should make height an int and we shouldn't make it an unsigned int. Does anybody remember why I suggested that? Yes. Right, so we're gonna perform subtractions. Therefore, we might get overflow if we had an unsigned integer. So if I said, if left height was zero and right height is two, then we would get negative two. But if we put it into an unsigned integer, this now becomes 4 billion, uh, 700 some odd million, which is a lot higher than uh, one. So what I've done in AVL is I've created allowed imbalance. So what I'm gonna do, uh, this is at line 318, I'm gonna scroll back up to the top. There it is, sorry. Inside I have a static const int allowed imbalance equals one. So in this case, I just wanna uh, quickly introduce the idea of a static variable. So const means it changes. And with static, what this allows me to do is it is a variable that can be accessed by every version of an AVL tree, but because it's static, I only have one copy. So if I have 20 AVL trees, there will only be one copy of this particular variable. So static, I'm reducing the memory, const, I'm keeping it constant, and that's what I've called allowed imbalance. All right, does anybody have any questions on that? Let me quickly check the Slack to see if there's any questions in there. We have one comment. Do we need to copy down problem four for lecture 19? Uh, no, you don't. I am wanted, uh, they, I didn't think that we didn't really have enough time. I'm just gonna go over the concept of balance. Okay, so now that we have allowed imbalance, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to line 318 and walk you through this design process. So here we have left height minus right height is greater than the imbalance. This means that we have whatever's on the left is two or more than what we have on the right. So now I have to decide what it is that I'm gonna do. So if the height of the left 
is I go current pointer left left because so what this says is I have cur pointer. Underline that. Right. If this is greater than or equal to the height of left right, then I'm going to rotate on the left child. Otherwise, I am going to perform this double. Does everybody see that? And then I do the exact opposite in the other direction. If height, if the right height is greater than the left height, then I check the right's children to see if that's an opportunity for a single rotation. Otherwise, if we don't meet that requirement, then we're going to do double. And at the very end, I update the, the, the integer, the private member of the node to be equal to the maximum of the height on the left and the height of the right plus one. Right, does anybody have any questions about how we did that? Okay, so what I'm going to show you next is I'm going to I'm going to run this uh, make test AVL2. And I'm going to and it, what it has here is I insert several values and then it goes over the entire, the, the in order, pre order, post order, and level order traversal for the problem. Now I have it in the slides as well. And I'm going to show you what the tree will look like at every stage. So when I insert 15, it's just 15. Next, I'm going to insert 10, and 10 is going to become the left child of 15. The next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to insert six. So initially, six becomes the left child of 10. We discover that we have here an opportunity for a rotate right. So now what's going to happen is 10 is going to be moved up, 15 is going to become the right child of 10, and six will remain the left child of 10. So does everybody see that step so far? And so if we look at the actual output, we see that the in order makes sense. The level order is 10, 6, and 15. So when I ask this kind of question on an exam, you will need to produce the appropriate, identify the appropriate level order. So now I insert 25. Note we don't have any rotations at this point. But if I insert 30, now we have a rotation that we need to do here. So based on this, what's going to happen is 25 is going to move up and become the right child of 10, 15 is going to become the left child of 25, and 30 is going to remain in that same place. And we now see the level order is 10, 6, 25, 15, and 30. All right, comment in the chat. Do we? Need, okay, no, it's the same comment as before. So now we're going to insert 12. So now we have the scenario of we need to figure out where it is in the tree that we get violated. So here it's 0, 0, or where the tree gets uh, condition gets violated. So we have 2 and 1, and now we have 1 and 3. So the violation happens up here. So the key thing is, if you're identifying this on an exam, how do I handle this situation? So the condition is, well, if I move 15 over here, which is what would happen, the balance doesn't get fixed. So what's going to happen instead is that we're going to have that double, right? So what's eventually going to happen is 15 is going to become the new root. 10's right child is going to become 12. 15's left child will become 10. 15 will point to 25 like so. Does anybody have any questions about what it is I did and why? All right. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to insert five. No violation. Now we're going to insert four. Now we have a violation at the node containing six. So we're going to perform a right rotation. 
Five is going to become the left child of 10. And then six would become the right child of five. Finally, I insert three. And so three, what's going to happen is it's going to ins come down here. This would be zero, zero, one, zero, two, one, three, and one. So the violation happens up here. So the crucial thing is we need to perform this rotation in order to get that balance. So when we get three, it's going to rotate. Five will come up. 10 will become the right child of five. Six would become the left child of 10. And now we have that balance to meet that. So if we see that our final in order traversal is 15, 5, 25, 4, 10, 30, 3, 6, and 12. And if we look at our pre presented result, we see that 15, 5, 25, 4, 10, 30, 3, 6, and 12 is our level order traversal. And here, what I did is I showed that contains works as well as the min and max that we presented in previous lectures. So on an exam, I would expect you to be able to insert and demonstrate your ability to perform a single left, a single right, and identify when you would need to do a double. And I would ask you on an AVL problem to identify the level order traversal. So on exam, I would ask you, if I gave you a tree, I would ask you to do, give me the in order, I'm sorry, give me the uh, pre-order and post-order so I could do those. And then level order will be in the context of telling me what the final BST or ABL tree is. Does anybody have any other questions regarding AVL trees before we move on? So I have a couple of quick notes about AVL trees. AVL trees are perfectly balanced. And I, I would ask if, uh, if, you, if everybody could please move to the Slack because that way it's, it's really hard to keep track of all the different chats. So the amount of the left and right child is more than one, it's a violation. So absolutely right, Dominic. Here is, these are perfectly balanced. By the end, no subtree has a max height with a difference greater than one. However, the max height, we saw that this method is called several times, right? So what ends up happening is these are, AVL trees are really good if you want to have a trade-off with a little bit of pre-processing, but then you can do a lot of find methods like on a database. AVL trees are really good if you're trying to do some find information on databases. They're also really good if you need a strict big O log N of finds. You're gonna encounter that scenario a lot in your algorithms course. So you're gonna get a question and say, well, we need a big O log N uh, operation. Which data structure would you use? In that specific uh, case, you will definitely want to use an AVL tree. The issue is because we call that max height several times, that pre-processing trade-off that we get for that good scenario isn't always good in other scenarios. So what we wanna do is try to come up with other ways that we can do what are known as localized balancing of trees. Can we do things that would anal analyze what we know at the local level and allow us to be able to make decisions that will get us a, what we're gonna call a relaxed balance. And it's really close, but not exact. If you need it to be exactly or strictly big O log of N, AVL tree, otherwise we're gonna have some relaxed balancing to give us some of the benefits there. And the first one that we are going to investigate is what's known as a B tree. And that's what's gonna motivate the rest of our lecture today. So let's discuss some of the trade-offs. With binary search tree, where we have this worst case scenario that we have encountered where you keep inserting everything and it becomes a glorified double, a singly linked list, but it doesn't even have the links back. It's all just null. With AVL trees, it's always, it's strict big O log of N. However, we have expensive balancing mechanisms. So the question is, what's a good compromise? So right around, you know, a lot of the balancing trees that you'll find were invented in the early seventies because they were all trying to address this problem. So B tree, well, binary search trees were first implemented late 50s, early 60s. 
And now it's, okay, we need to figure out how to find things even faster and account for balance. So 1964 is when AVL trees come around. Now we're trying to really beat AVL trees after that. So the first one that's presented is around 1970. And in 1970, we're dealing with drum memories and I've discussed those briefly, but now we're up to in 1970, 180 kilobytes. So when we first invented AVL trees, we're working on 15 kilobytes. Now we're up to 180 kilobytes. We're really chugging along with memory, right? To give you some perspective on the type of memory they were working on, you would need 10 of these drum memories to hold any one picture you have on a, on a modern iPhone picture. All right, so the main idea with a B tree is that we have multiple values per node. And then in each node, we're gonna, so before we have one value and two pointers. So now we could have N values and then we would have N plus one pointers underneath. So if I had two values inside, I could potentially sort it. Let's say I did 10, 17. I could have six and eight over here. I could have 11 and 14 and then 19 over here. So we have two values in there and then three pointers inside. Does everybody see that? When we get to types of problems, I will refer to the number of pointers contained in each one of these nodes as a degree. And so I say, if give me with a binary, with, I'm sorry, with a B tree and this number of insertions with the degree of three, select the final B tree. When I say degree of three, that means three pointers and it can contain two values per node. Does that make sense? We'll go over several examples in lecture today. All right, so here is the general idea. And here's the rule. The rule is that every leaf in the B tree, when we do all these mechanisms, they're always going to end up at the same level. So the worst case scenario will always be the same. That's the goal of a B tree. So now we're evolving from strict log in every single time to all of our keys are at the bottom. But we, if once you get to a key, you actually have to go through the values inside each of the nodes to get these locations. So it's a little more relaxed. And now, but with a trade off of slightly worse search time every once in a while. Every node has at most M children. So what we say by this is we have a node and here it has three children, one, two, and three. So it has at most, what we're gonna see when we start inserting is that it cannot, it will initially split up and initially have two. And then after that's done, it will start filling out based on our insertion techniques. A non-leaf node with K children contains K minus one keys. So we're eventually gonna see how many elements are, need to be put into a tree. So we're eventually, we have, let's say we have a degree of four. That means I have three elements. And then I try to insert a fourth element. What you're gonna see is that we're gonna split it up, raise one, and then we're gonna have one over here and two over here based on where it's insert. So that one and two is what's being referred to in this rule that I've circled. And then all leaves appear at the same level. So what I will show you on the next slide is I'm going to, I have a degree, a B tree of max degree three, which means it has three pointers inside each node. It has two values inside. So every node must have M children. Next slide. Every node must have, has at most three children. Does that make sense? Next rule. Every non-leaf node except the root has at least M divided by two child nodes. So right now we see that this is the root, but if we kept adding and adding, we would see that 
we would have to split them up in order to get elements in when we do these insertions. A non-leaf node with three children contains two keys and all leaves appear at the same level. So that is where this particular bee tree, and if you, let me, so you got 22 and 30 up here. This is 20 and 21, 25 and 28, 32, and this means it's empty. So what we have here is we, if we did an in order traversal, we'd go over here and we see 20, 21. Then we come up here, evaluate this value that gives us 22. Then we go down here and we get 25 and 28. Then we would go to here to 30. And then we investigate this child that gets us to 32. Does that make sense? All right, so what I wanna do is we have a max degree of three. I'm gonna go over two examples and then you're gonna uh, work on problems one and two and we'll work on problems one and two together. What I want you to pay attention to and the first two problems are just gonna be purely insertions. We have, we're not gonna deal with any deletions yet. So for insertion, what we're gonna do is you have to identify the max degree and I, on the on exam problem, I will identify the degree. And then we already say, well, max degree of three means I can have three nodes, I mean, three pointers per node, and at most two data values in each structure. So let me walk through the first three insertions to give you a perspective of what's going to be done here. So first I wanna insert the value 10. So what I have here in this animation is the stars represent the pointers that can eventually point to children, right? And then I have the two values we could call them buckets that represent the current values inside of this particular B tree node. Next, I'm going to insert seven. So what's going to happen is it's going to move 10 over and we're going to see seven here and 10 here. Does that make sense so far? So now we are out of room. So we are now going to insert another element. In this case, it's going to be 11. The trick is I'd always draw it, whether it's going to be in the middle, the left, or the right, of where it would be in order. So we see that 7, 10, and 11 would be the ordering, right? What's going to happen here is it's going to say, all right, I have exceeded the number of values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, 3 divided by 2 is going to be 1 which means I'm going to grab what would be element one and I'm going to move it up, which means that 10 is gonna be here and 10 is gonna be in its own new node. It's going to have seven over here and then it's gonna have 11 here and this was gonna become empty and this is gonna be pointing to nothing. So we split it up and lift it. Does that make sense? So let me see, let me see. if we were inserting five, well, what would happen is seven would become the middle element. Seven would come up here. Its left child contains the value five. Its second contains the value 10. And then this one's empty. And then the third child is null. If I was picking some, a value between seven and 10, let's say I was picking eight, well, what happened is eight becomes that value. So eight comes up here, seven would come down here. Its second child would point to 10. This one would be empty. And this one would also point to null. Does anybody have any questions about that? And so now that is what it would look like when we're done. All right, so I have a question for everybody. We're now gonna insert the value six. What do you think is gonna happen? Any guesses? Feel free to either raise your hand or write your proposed what's gonna happen in the Slack. 
Yes. Very good. We're going to come down here. We're going to say, well, six is less than 10. And then we're going to move seven over to the right, and six is going to become here. All right, so now we're going to insert five. So let's walk through what will happen. Well, five is going to come down here, and then we have our split. Now, here's the key thing we need to bear in mind. When we split, we want all of the child nodes to, I mean, all the leaf nodes to be at the same level. So here is what's going to happen with the B tree. Six is going to split up, and it's going to become its own subtree. So we would have five and seven, right? Does that, does that make sense so far if we're just dealing with this subtree? But now we're going to come up here. If we didn't deal with that, what would happen is 10 would be up here, 11 would be here, and our rule would become violated. So what's going to happen is, well, this node isn't full. So we're just going to move all the nodes over. We're going to say, well, 10 is going to move over here, which means this pointer is not going to be pointing to here anymore. This pointer is. And then I can put six here. This pointer instead is going to point to a new key containing the value seven. And this pointer is going to be pointing to a new key containing the value five. Does anybody have any questions about that? That's typically where students get confused on B tree. So if what I just said lost you, please do not hesitate to ask. All right, so let me show you what will happen in the next animation. What's going to happen is five is put there. Then initially it looks like this, but because we want to move it up, we're going to see that the leaves must remain at the same depth. We propagate up and combine. So now we see, like I draw with the pointers now pointing over here to that, but still pointing to the same node. And what we're going to see here is that 10 is going to move over here. This pointer is going to point here. This pointer is going to point here. And then we're going to see six in that location. And if I clean it up, it will look like that. Wait, does that make sense? Yeah, I don't see any questions in the Slack either. So now we're going to be inserting 13, which comes over here on the right. I do 12, 12 is in the middle. So I would split it. I would rise it up. Oh, hold on. But then we have an issue. We rise it up, but guess what? Six and 10 is now full. So what do we think, does anybody have any theories on what's going to happen here? If I raising up 6, 10, and 12, these are the ones I'm going to combine. Does anybody have any ideas on what will happen? Yes. All right, so I see what you're doing. So basically what we're doing is we'd be moving 12 up here and we're thinking, proposing maybe we move 10 down and 12 up. What they choose to do instead is that we're gonna say, well, six, 10 and 12 is going to be its own subtree. We're gonna move 12 up. And what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna do 10 is going to be parent with six and 12. And then what's gonna happen is Six is going to point to five and seven, just like it had before, these two. 10 is going to point to 12. 12 is going to have 11 and 13. So we'll split it up like that. And then finally, if we insert 15, it goes here. Does that, does that make sense what we just did? All right, we're going to do the same thing now with a degree of four. So I'm going to insert 10, 7, and 11. So initially it's 10, 7 is going to bump it over, and then 11 is going to be there. 
So now we're going to try to insert 6. So here is the thing. Since it's an even, what do we do? Well, we have 3. We have a degree of 4 divided by 2. Minus 1 is going to be 1. So we're going to move 7 up, and then 7 is going to have its left child is 6, and then its next child is going to have 10 and 11. It'll move up like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert 5. 5 is going to move 6 over. Oh, okay. So if I, in this animation I show here, well, if it was 9, we'd move 9 up because that would be its current location. And if we move 12, we would actually move 10 up because 12 would be over here and 10 would rise. Does that make sense? Okay, so we have a question. Why did you do 4 divided by 2 minus 1? So in, in, in an odd case, it becomes easy because it just divides. But now you can do one of two things. We could either say, well, if we do 4 divided by 2, we now have 7, 10, and 11. But now let's take a look at what happens. So if I do 6, this becomes 0, 1, and 2. That rises. And then we'd have 10, 6, 7, and 11. If we had 7, 10, 11, and 12, it would split up here. And then we'd have 7 and 10 down here and 12 down here. So the thing is, is that you can either do minus 1 to have the values here at 7, 10, 11, and we'd pick 10 to come up in the event of 12. But now it's representing 1 or 2, which is the base address. I'm well, not the base address, the ordering. So we would have 7, 10, and 11. And then if I did 6, the ordering would be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So here are many design choices. And what you'll see to keep it consistent with what you'll find elsewhere is that the design choice was 1 instead of 2. Does that make sense? Uh, please let me know if that addressed your question in the slide. Okay, so in this case, because we're inserting 12, I'm glad to see that it addressed your question. So now we're inserting 12, that moves one up. So we're gonna have 10, seven, and 12. And now I'm gonna insert six and five. Okay, so now we're going back to the original problem. See, I even made a little note, I confused myself. So before we had seven, 10, and 12, no, we, we inserted six, six was down here. Now we're at five. So now I want to insert 13. 13 is actually going to come here because we're not full. So now what's going to happen is we're going to insert 12. So 12 would be here, which means we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. It's going to take 11 and bump it up. So what's going to happen is 11 is going to go here. This pointer is going to point to a node containing only 10. And this node, this point is going to point to a node containing 12 and 13. So here we would split them up and then 11 would move up since it's not full. And we see that that pointer points to 10. This pointer points to 12 and 13. We free the old pointer. And then when we clean up the animation, it looks like that. Does that make sense? All right, so now we have full insertion. So some historical interesting notes. So what does B tree mean? It doesn't actually have a meaning. Um, uh, John Bayer was one of the co-inventors of it, but that doesn't mean it. They invented it while working on a project at Boeing uh, or Balance or Broad Tree or Bushy Tree. That's what people have guessed over the years, but it doesn't have an actual meaning. But they do comment that the more you understand these potential names for a bee tree, the more you actually understand how they work. And then they actually wrote this in their paper when they were trying to come up with names. For reasons clear to American English speakers, the name BM tree 
uh, Mikulski was the other one. So BM tree was a non-starter. Okay. All right, so what I want you to do now is run make prob one. And so I wanna uh, describe to you what's gonna come up here. So the way the problem would be presented is I'll give you a set of insertions and a degree, and then there would be a bunch of pictures and you have to pick the correct one. You'll notice here that I have a little link. So I used a link shortener and it's yld.me. And if you click on this, you go yld.me and then it's slash dv2m uppercase V 2 M. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna take you to the page where I've been compiling the final exam study guide review. And when you click on it, it's going to go there and then it's specifically gonna to go to the specific lecture number. So you see that it's breaking us to lecture 20. So please go to problem one and problem one has the choices for the solution. And then problem two, I have the same thing. So in response to some of the uh, SIF comments, you will see that I have an allotted time on an exam question like this. This is the amount of time I would give you to solve it. And I have some descriptions on other uh, time descriptions on the exam. So please take five minutes to make an attempt at these two problems. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work through the problems together on the whiteboard. And then after that, we're gonna go through B tree deletion. And it's like, I don't want to answer this question either.
All right, so who would like, who would like to walk me through the first four insertions on problem one? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have six, seven, and 10 as the initial three. So better way to me draw it out, got six, seven, and 10. And we put in three initially because it's a degree of four. So the number of values in there is going to be one minus the degree. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, the next value you want to insert is five. So five would actually end up here. By design, we're going to pick this value to raise up. And then this is going to become six, five, and then the second comes sec seven and 10. So now the next insertions are going to be four, which will come over here, and then 12, which will come over here. So now, what is the last step that we're going to do in this particular problem? Yes. Absolutely right. So what's going to happen is 11 would end up here. So to do this, we're going to raise 10 up, and then the final is going to be we have five down here, six. It would point to seven because this is this node's still going to be here. We're splitting it up, but then we're raising 10 up. So now when we raise 10 up, 10 is going to be joining this key, and then we would have 11 and 12. And if I remember correctly, that's choice A for that problem. Yes. Because, okay, so what's going to end up happening is when we insert 11, the values that we have are 7, 10, and 12. So now what's going to happen is when we, if we try to insert 11, it's bigger than 6, then it goes down here, which means the ordering would be like that. Does that make sense so far? So now what's going to happen is this becomes a array of 7, 10, 11, and 12. So by design, what we're going to do is we do in the ordering 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's a degree of 4, 4 divided by 2 minus 1. Since it's even, the design choice then comes 1, which is 10. And so now that's the one that gets raised up. And when it gets raised up, we had an empty location there. So as a result, 10 goes up. And the way we would have split it, if this, if this was just a it was 7, 10, and 12, and I inserted 11 by itself. And that, it, that was the whole B tree. We split 10 up, and then 7 would be a subtree like that. But now we have to make sure in order to keep the B tree conditions met that we have to also do the, I'm um, sorry, we have to raise this up and see if there's an opportunity to fill it in, which in that case we have it. So then what ends up happening is that 10 fills in that box and then these pointers here represent these pointers here. Did that address your question? Yes, go ahead, yes. It's going to be, well, it's, that's what's, that logic is here. We will pick. No, it's going to be, if it's even, it's going to be the number of values divided by two. And then if it's odd, it's going to be values divided by two minus one. All right, did that address your question? You think so? Okay, well, if you have any other questions, please uh, feel free to ask a follow-up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the other board and I'm going to go over problem two. Board, your right, my left. And so hopefully this will address it because we're now gonna do it one with a degree of three. So now what will happen is we have 15 and seven. So that becomes our initial node, right? Degree of three, three pointers, and that has two values inside of it. So now what's going to happen is that 22, this would be the key. 22 would be the larger one. 
So that's going to be our representation. Since the degree is odd, we have 7, 15, and 22. 15 is going to be in the middle. So now what's going to happen is we are going to split it up, and now the, it's going to become 15, 7, and 22. Now we have can hold two values in every single key. So what's going to happen is 26 is going to be our next one. We just put 26 here. 24, well, now we've exceeded it. And now this will hopefully address your question further. Because we have two values, and we're now going to try to insert a third value, if I tried to put in 24, it would go down here, and 24 would be in the middle of 22 and 26. So now it's odd. We have, we have a degree of three, three potential values. If I arrange this, it'd be 22, 24, and 26, and the ordering would be zero, one, and two. This case, we're gonna pick the one that would be in the middle and it would raise up. So now this would become 15, 24, seven, just like before. But now what we're gonna do is we have this half as the left child of 24, and then the right child will contain 26. So now this contains 22 and this contains 26. Does that make sense? Does that address your question further? And does anybody have any other questions before I continue? All right, so let's continue on this problem. We have 17, 15, 17 is greater. We can just put 17 here. Four can go over here. And then three is going to be the last one. So if we have on an exam problem, this is the type of thing that I'd want to ask you about and see if you can identify. So now what's going to happen is I've got three, four, and seven. Which one am I going to move up? Yes. What's that? Oh, well, oh, well, that's right. I missed 19. All right. So three and four. Uh, th this was what? Seven. And then 19 is here. So 19 goes there. Which one am I moving up? 19. Very good. So now I would move 19 up here. And if it was like this, it would say 19, 17, and uh, 22, right? Well, we can't have that. That violates the B true rule that all the nodes need to be at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we are going to then compare those three. 19 is in the middle. So what's going to happen is that the final tree for this insertion would be 19, 15 would be over here, and 24 would be over here. 15's left child, initial child, is still 7. But because we've moved 19 up, now 17 will be the right child of 15. So that becomes here. We moved 19 up, 24 is there. 19's old left child becomes 24's left child. So this becomes 19, I'm sorry, uh, 22. And then 26 goes over here. And so we would have four there and everything. Um, three, this last one here, we'd have an insertion. We'd move four up. And then we'd have 19. Now we can move this up here. We would have four, three, seven, 15, 17. And then over here, this is 24, 22, and 26. And if I remember correctly, that's choice C. Does everybody see what I did here? In this particular step? All right, so what I'm going to uh, do is I'm, I'm going to go over B tree deletion.
Is everybody in here? There we go. I just didn't have the uh, thing on. All right, so next, how we, this is how we're going to actually split the child here. And the way this works is I have the right child is I set this now equal to that pointer with that specific set of keys and indicate whether that's a leaf. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these values over, the ones that I had before. And then I'm gonna say, well, if it's not a leaf, I can just get the right child from the next pointer over like that. So now what I would do is this is where I would create that new child pointer. And then I would link it just like we did in the, ad, in the drawing and animations. And so now I change all the keys to move those over just like we did in the animation. And then I increment the number of keys to indicate that I've actually added one. So when we insert into a non-full key, what's gonna happen is I have, say I have two and 20. Number of keys, I can have three keys, but right now I'm gonna iterate through and I say, well, I'm trying to insert 15. If I'm inserting 15, that's between two and 20. So I'm gonna move 20 over. And that's what happens at key, I plus one equals keys. I decrement and now it's time to replace it. And so we see that it's two and 15 and I increment the number of keys from two to three. Uh, I'm gonna skip over this for now. I'll go over this in a lot more detail next week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a command make B tree in class. And what this code is gonna do is it's going to print out a specific B tree that I've done. Where is it, sorry. So this, I've inserted a specific tree and all of these are at the same level. I just had to make them work in the context of the PowerPoint, but I can go structuralized. And these are specific words. I got structural list. It points to structuralism, structuralized. And then this pointer goes over here to structure, structurally, structured, you got structural lists, structures, and then you got strudel. And after strudel, we got struggle and struggle bus. So we have an ordering here inside of the tree. And then what I have in the B tree in class is I look to see if it's in here. So I have the, I print the traversal of the tree and then I print out struggle bus and I print out all of the elements I encounter on the way there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, start going over deletion. And then what I'm gonna do next week is I'm gonna go over the code for the B tree in a lot more detail. And then we're gonna use that to motivate our study of red black trees. So let me go over deletion first. So we still need to maintain the balance. But we have to consider whether or not we need to start borrowing from certain elements in the tree. We need to notice that all of the deletion in the elements is the same. We must ensure that the height to all leaves is the same and that there's a valid path to all the nodes. So just like before with anything else with trees, we have to make sure that we actually can find everything. So let's say I have inserted, so we did this previous problem and this is the tree that we get. So now what I wanna do is I wanna delete 15. So if I delete 15, I can just delete it from that specific node and there doesn't appear to be any rules violated. Now, if I wanna delete 10, we're gonna have an issue here. Is that I have a null pointer there. We shouldn't have that. What we need to do is we need to figure out ways in which to keep the tree balanced. So what's gonna happen is when I delete 10, it's gonna say, well, this is gonna become empty and I have a non-empty left node to, node to the left. So what's gonna happen is six is gonna move up and seven's gonna come down and fill that node.
Does everybody see that? So now we have the ability to borrow from left. So we update it and then free that element there and now it's empty. Now, if I want to delete five, well, we're going to have an issue here. I don't want to have a null element to the left, and now we're going to evaluate all of these elements here. So now what's going to happen is, well, this is full. I'm going to move six back down. I'm going to update 11 here. And now this tree is going to work out because watch what happens. There we go. So we move 11, but now we are kind of out of order. So what we're going to do instead is that we are going to merge the nodes from seven and six. And then we're going to move this node over by one. So let me walk through that step again. So we choose to delete five. Five is going to become free, so we're going to move six down. And we would move 11 over, but now we have an ordering violation. So we have one element up here, and we're going to have two elements here. So the way we can move these is we know that since we have the ordering violation that these values are both less than 11. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge those together and we're gonna move the other nodes pointer over by one. Like so. So then the next question becomes, well, what happens when we try to delete 11? When we delete 11, what we're gonna do is we're going to, since we have two elements here, we can just move 11 up here. I mean, so we can move seven up there and it will be fine. So now what happens if I want to delete seven? So if I delete seven, what's going to happen is, well, I would move six up, but now we have violation. So now we're going to do this same thing like we did last time. We're going to move 12 up. But since we have 12 and 13, what's going to happen is we move 12 up and then we have 6, 13 is to the right and 6 is to the left. Does that make sense to everybody? So then I'm cruel. I try to delete 12. But now we're in a situation where we have a node pointing to a null pointer. There's only one element here and one element here. So therefore, the simplest thing to do is just to delete and combine them together. And then if we deleted the rest of them, we're going to do that there. So I'm going to skip over. This is here in the slides if you want to review that. What I want to do for the last five minutes is we're going to work together on problems three and four. All right, so what I want you to do is we're going to run make problem three. And we have the same set of insertions, but now we have a pair of deletions. So there's two different ways we can do this. And for time simplicity, at the top, if you want to practice on the exam, there's a link up here. It's a really good animation for um, visualizing bee trees. And I've included those animations for other uh, data structures so you can practice and uh, do well on the final. All right, give me a split second here. The website's acting up a little bit. All right, so we're just going to work through this together so we can see everything here. So the first set of insertions for problem three is going to be 15, 7, 22, and 26. And so the degree here is a degree of three. So if you want to practice this, if it ever decides to come up, you just select max degree of three, you can do 15, and it'll actually work through the full animation, 7, 22, and 26. So what's going to happen is the ordering is going to, uh, it's going to put 22 in the middle, and then 26 is going to be 
over, it's going to raise up 15, sorry. And since we have a degree of three, we're now going to insert 26, 24, and 17. So if I insert 26, it's going to go over to the right. It's going to split with 24 in the middle. So 24 would rise up to be in the same key as 15. And then 17, 4, and 21. 17 would, be, would join the middle key. 4 would join the left key. And then 21 would split in the middle, which would then bring up 21 again. So 21 is going to become the new root with left and right child of 15 and 24. Does that make sense so far? So now what we're going to do is we're going to delete two elements. So this is representative of what I would ask on an exam. Delete 21 and delete 24. You know what? You're on the right path if you get on my exam and you get to the first deletion and it's the new root. If it's the new root, so far you are having a 100% correct answer. So what's going to happen is if I delete 21, it's going to move 17 up. It's going to be the same principle as trying to do the B tree, I'm sorry, a binary search tree deletion. So it's going to move 17 up. And then what's going to happen is down here, it's going to rotate. So it's going to be 17 up here. And then it's going to be 7. It's going to be, I'm sorry, this will be 7. It'll be 4. It'll be 15 over here. And all of this is going to remain the same. So here's what's going to happen. I delete 21. You're going to see that it's going to move 17 up and then do that rotation. And you can do pause at the bottom to help yourself walk through it. And so the next deletion that I have here is 24. 24 is over here on the right. And so here's what's going to happen there. This is going to become empty. And then it's going to try to merge these. Right. So let me pause and walk you through. I'm going to press pause. And we're going to delete 24. And saying delete 24, step forward. It tries to merge those, but now we are violated the rule. So now what we need to do is we're going to bring, combine these together. We have an empty node here, seven and 17. We step forward and that combines and gives us our new one. So we have four, seven, 15, 17, 22, and 26. And that matches with choice B. So if I did this right, and there you go. So choice B is our last one. Does anybody have any questions of, about what we've done so far? All right, so what I'm gonna do uh, on Tuesday's lecture, I'm gonna review this and I'm gonna go over problem four and then briefly go over the construction of B tree and code. And then we're gonna spend the rest of the week diving into red black trees. Does anybody have any questions about anything we've covered or anything that we're going to do um, in terms of due dates or the fact that we don't have a lab on Monday or Tuesday? All right, well, in that case, I will see you all later. Have a good weekend and uh, good luck on any other assignments that you have.